Good morning. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in Jesus' name. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. In Jesus' name. Mark. Shege de balahaski pokonom doski pratale parasi protofele kendem bengindo toski pretele manaro sufretele paratis kutopeladis. Shkebriya naveli atapalas kero brendo hoskupini atapalati ataraskishu shutopalanis. Reske de brende mete pleta pele grande pele kish kudum ran to kol koski raman tele kepedia skuroton to pele desas. Rege de venemeras ugre nementos kebra namatos igre nementelevedis. Elege de apalaves e prendo via talaskis evre nementos. Crede mendeves kubra nampatis o le nemena katesas. Fradege de veletis, frade melegetis, o rondo vikas kila palas. Sele prende vele kende pedo hos kufi, de vele mani apalandos ke prani metele ke ti arata paskis. Shebre de vele ke te man, dos kufre en te vele ke ti ete ski. Ske pene ti tale tis, une vele de te vele ke tis. Ske vradi e te leves, e rus to vre e te pasis, e te vele ke te mene no so ske. Jage de vele ke ti apa, o ske mbrene, en to ski vala te pere esos, vele di apas. Skuvre ne me kuska ne es, evle ne pos i palakatis. Palakatis. Do not be worried about those who come and those who leave you, says God. And those who will not stay, says God. I'm bringing those that are yours and their replacement to be strong, says God. And everyone who has decided not to be for you, do not fight to have to bring them back, says God. For better ones and better people are coming, says God. And a new day is here for you, says God. And I say to you by the Spirit of God that God is bringing a new team, a new people. And they're not familiar. They'll be helpers of your destiny. They're not people that you know. They're people who believe in you. And they would take up that which God has called you to do to dimensions that will blow your mind. That you look back in wonder why were you with the people who you were literally begging to stay. But God is saying, let it go. Let it go. For help is coming from strange places. For the seeds that you have sown are commanding mighty harvest. And the hearts of men will be turned towards you. To the intent that those who have walked away from you will not and cannot catch up to what God will be doing in your life. And it will be up to you to show grace to them. Knowing that what they meant for evil, God has turned it around for your good. Says the Spirit of God. Says the Spirit of God. But help will rise from strange places for you, says God. Help will rise from strange places for you, says God. Help will rise from strange places for you, says God. And support will come from new places, says God. It will not look like the old, because it will be directly um, from God and the testament. That no man can put God to ransom, help hold God to ransom, and it will allow what God will do in this season. Says the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's such a profound prophetic word. See, that's why you can log in on time. Such a profound prophetic word. I also believe that it is for us as a church is for me specifically too and for everyone here for everyone here glory to God glory to God first 2 Peter chapter 3 let's make our declarations 2 Peter chapter 3 let's make our declaration chapter 3 
Let's make our declarations. At the count of three, one, two, three, go. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the redeemed of the Lord. I am the beloved of Abba. All my sins are forgiven. <coughs> and I'm passionately loved by God. I'm powerfully helped by God. I am kept and protected by God. I enjoy angelic assistance. I am irrevocably blessed. I am eternally forgiven. I am the healed of the Lord. I enjoy divine health. I have the favor and the wisdom of God. I am fruitful. I flourish, excel, and prosper in all that I do. Nothing is against me. Nothing dies in my hands. I have the multipliers anointing. I am never stranded. The supernatural is natural to me. All things are working together for my good. God loves me more than the devil hates me. And grace is working for me. Glory to God. Second Peter chapter 3. Father bless your word in the name of Jesus. Spirit of God help us today to understand the scripture. That it may bless us, we are changed as Christ is revealed, we are unveiled in Jesus' much less name. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Beloved, I now write to you the second epistle, in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder. Your mind is stirred up by reminder. I am back on my phone. Okay, glory to God. Your mind is stirred up. Your mind is built up by reminder. 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 That you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. So Peter is emphasizing, remind yourself, talk to yourself, remind yourself, remind yourself, remind yourself of the things you've known about Jesus. Remind, keep in remembrance. Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lust. Can you see this? Scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. He's talking about scoffers. Scoffers will come. Yeah, continuing the gospel because there will be people who would come and um, say something different. Yeah, verse five. For this they will forget. For this they will, for this they willfully forget that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water, and in the water by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. You forget even what happened to Noah, how the earth was flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire unto the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Eight, but beloved, he's talking to people who are of reprobate mind, he's talking to people who are scoffers. You see that when it comes to eight, he says, But beloved, do not forget this one thing that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not what is he saying? That is not is long for us over here, but for God, it's not it's not long. Yeah. Nine, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering towards us. That means it's not like God cannot end all of this at once, 
but he is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So he's showing you that, yes, but beloved, a thousand years is like one day. I know it's long for us over here, but it's not long for God. And by the way, he's not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness. Yeah? But he's a long suffering towards us. Romans 2, verse 4. It is the long suffering, enduring patience of God, MPC, that brings men to repentance. The long suffering, enduring patience of God. That's what MPC says. That brings men to repentance. As some count slackness, but it is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the element will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the element will melt with fervent heat. Nonetheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth, which in which righteousness dwells. He's showing you the ultimate agenda of God is that all men will be saved. But if they refuse salvation, you know, what's coming to them is very sure. Verse 14. So verse 1 to 11 to 13 is just showing that they are scoffers and the people who are just messing up but God still has a plan for them to be saved the people will be saved at the very last minute God will accept them because God doesn't want anyone to perish he didn't die for people to perish for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life 17 God did not send his son into this world to condemn but that through him all men would be saved. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer imputing to them their unrighteousness. So the grand plan of God is a long-suffering plan that would drag all men to repentance. I kind of believe that those people, not us, who will make it to heaven, by the time they stand before the white throne judgment, they will just judge themselves. Like if you now see the grand plan and God gave you all this rope, this opportunity, you will judge yourself. You will judge. I believe that they are likely going to just say, ah, it's okay. Because the person gave you a long rope and long plan to do it. Glory to God. 14. He's talking to um, admonition to us. Now, therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace without sport and blameless. And consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. You see, he's emphasizing again. And Peter got this revelation from studying Paul. Peter got this revelation of the long suffering. You know, see, Peter not really like long suffering like that. You know Peter now. Peter is not that patient guy that knows long suffering. No, no, you understand? So if you know Peter, you know Peter doesn't have, doesn't, it's not like that. That's not who Peter is. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace and sport, without sport and blameless. 15, 15. Follow me, 15 is very important. And consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Is salvation. You know, Peter and a jungle justice cut off somebody's ears, Ananias and Sapphira. You know, Peter doesn't have patience, you know, by nature. 
So Peter is growing and he's saying, this long suffering I'm talking about, I did not receive it from God. I learned it from Apostle Paul. I did not receive it. I learned it from Apostle Paul. And consider that the long suffering of our Lord Jesus, our Lord is salvation. And as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him as written to you. So none of these guys wrote until Paul wrote to. Nobody, none of the apostles wrote until Paul wrote. After Paul had written, that's when they wrote. You can find it here. So Peter is saying, Peter is saying, this thing that I'm saying to you about the long, long suffering, the grace of God, the patience of God, the grace of God and the patience of God, it's right here. I didn't find it. I didn't learn it. It was Apostle Paul that taught me of our Lord is salvation as also our beloved brother Paul according to the wisdom given to him has written to you. 16 as also in all his epistles what he wrote is in all his epistles that means he didn't just write Speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught, you see that? Which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction. So, for you to say, don't listen to Peter, to Paul, it actually means you're untaught. And you're unstable. So you're shading yourself. Untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction as they do also the rest of the scriptures. So these people are not just turning Paul's letter upside down. He's saying they do it to the rest of the scriptures. So to say that do not listen to Apostle Paul, you are scoring own goal. You are scoring own goal. You are actually... It's really painful though. And the person never read it in message. Let's read it in message. Fourteen to sixteen. So, my dear friend, since this is what you have to look forward to, do your very best to be found living at your best in purity and peace. Interpret our master's patience, restraint for what it is: salvation. Salvation. Our good brother, our good brother Paul, was given much wisdom in these matters. I'll read it in TPT. Let me just because the person read message. Maybe he just found the message translation, so I want to go there. Our good brother Paul, who was given much wisdom in these matters, refers to this in all his letters, and was and has and was written you, and has written you essentially the same thing. And has written you essentially the same. That means what I'm writing. He has written to you the same thing. Some things Paul writes are difficult to understand. Irresponsible people. So for you not to understand it is because you are irresponsible. Hey, this guy. Irresponsible people who don't know what they are talking about twist them which every way they every which way. Irresponsible people twist it. They do it to the rest of the scriptures to destroy themselves as they do it. Irresponsible people do it to Apostle Paul's letters and to the rest of the scripture. So the irresponsible people here are not against Apostle Paul's letters. That's what they do generally to the rest of the scriptures.
you seeing that? Are you seeing that? So, let's do it in intimity. It's so clear, but it's hard for people to. Intimity. Mm, 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 mm. Keep in mind that our Lord, intimity. I'm doing 15 and 16. Keep in mind that our Lord, extraordinary patience simply means more opportunity for salvation. It's really simple. Keep in mind that our Lord, extraordinary patience simply means more opportunity for salvation. It is the love of Christ that brings men to salvation. That's what it is. He's saying that just as our dear brother Paul wrote to you with the wisdom that God gave him. So God gave him wisdom to destroy the church. So you cannot discredit Paul without discrediting the, discrediting the rest of the scriptures. Because Paul derived his doctrine from the scriptures. So you, you said, you read that God gave him the wisdom. And this wisdom that God gave to him was to destroy the scriptures. What are you talking about? So this wisdom that God gave to him was to destroy the rest of the scriptures? You see that? Let's do 16. He consistently speaks of things in all of his letter. He consistently speaks of these things in all of his letters. Even though he writes some concepts that are overwhelming to our understanding, which the unlearned and unstable love to twist to their spiritual ruin as they do to other scriptures. So clear. Is there anything complex there? There's nothing really complex there. It's so clear. So you, you can't you can't say that and be shading yourself. You are ignorant, you are unstable, you are irresponsible, unlearned people. So you, you can't you can't you read that? How do you, you are shading yourself? You are describing yourself boldly. You are shading yourself and describing yourself boldly. You already know these things. Let me let's continue. So let's close. This is really there's nothing to unpack there that is okay. The last two verses, let me show you something. So you therefore beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness. Yeah. Being led away with the error of the wicked. So be led away with the error of the wicked. This verse can be twisted. Hmm? But the next verse is very clear. The next verse explains what 17 is saying. That means don't join... 17 is saying don't join those irresponsible, those unstable, those people who are shading themselves. Don't follow. 18 now says, but grow in grace which is the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. That don't follow them, but grow in grace. Who taught about grace? Apostle Paul. So Peter is saying, don't follow those irresponsible people. Grow in grace. Go and listen to Paul. Yeah, who taught about grace? That's what he said. Grow in grace. Paul. 18 can be your memory verse. But grow in grace. Kai, that is. 
and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you the truth. Who taught grace? So Peter was carefully deferring and referring to Paul. No. James. No, it was not James. It was not James. It was not carefully referring to James. There are other teachers there who are just using the grace of God and didn't understand it. It was not referring to that. Knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Glory to God. So you now know what it is. Tomorrow we start first John. Tomorrow we start first John. The problem with first John, you can't read first John alone. You have to read first John and second John. So tomorrow we have to do first and second John. You can't read first John alone. You have to read first John and second John. Glory to God. Declaration 69, Declaration 69, Declaration 69, for prayers you go, Declaration 69, don't miss Sunday morning, it's going to be good, Declaration 69. Happy birthday to you. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. I decree that you increase in wisdom, knowledge, and the favor of God. In Jesus' much less name. And resources are released to you. In Jesus' name. People of my dad is sick. Please can you say what a prayer? I pray for your dad that the healing power of God will touch him right now, wherever he is. And I decree that he cannot die untimely. That God preserves his life. In the name of Jesus, with mighty testimonies following. In Jesus' much less name. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. Declaration 69, Job 22, verse 29. When men are cast down, then thou shalt say, There is a lifting up, and he shall save the humble person. The words of your mouth are the trigger of your daily experiences. If you want to see things change for the better, start saying it. When others are experiencing a casting down, don't just sit and look around, otherwise you'll be next in line. Don't be a spectator in the event of your life. Speak the word consistently so that you can live the life of your dreams. Today, I declare that you're not limited in any way. I declare that you're not limited in any way. I'm praying for you. You're not limited in any way. There is no limitation. All the limitations are out of your life. In the name of Jesus, and because all barriers have been taken away in Christ Jesus, I declare that you enjoy the grace of elevation. I declare that you soar really, really high in the name of Jesus. I declare that you do not settle for anything less than God's best for you. That you do not settle for anything less than God's best for you. I decree and declare that you accomplish great feats with ease by the grace of God at work in you. I declare that the wisdom of God is at work in you. Therefore, you are not confused and you know what to do at all times and in all situations in the name of Jesus. I declare that you are bold and courageous. I declare that you refuse to be depressed in the name of Jesus. I decree God's strength is at work in you. I decree that you move mountains by the power and the wisdom of God at work in you. I see Jesus in the midst of your storms. Therefore, you are not afraid because you know who you are and in whom you have believed. In the name of Jesus, I decree that you increase from one level of glory to greater levels of glory. This is your consistent experience all the days of your life. Somebody, God is bringing you, you are, you are rising into a realm of peace. And everything is turbulent right now, but God is pulling you out of that storm and bringing you to a place of great peace. Says God is pulling you out of the storm and bringing you into the place of great peace. In the name of Jesus, I decree that you soar like an eagle, prevail over 
every storm of life and move with speed of the Holy Ghost. I decree that you operate with abundance of favor in the name of Jesus, that no matter the challenge you're faced with, no matter how hard things appear, no matter how you feel, one thing is confident about this is that God's grace would make all dreams in your life come alive in the name of Jesus. I also decree that you are destined to rule and to reign. You are created for the top and you cannot be limited in the name of Jesus. I declare that you're destined to rule and to reign. You are created for the top and you cannot be limited. You cannot be stopped. You cannot be hindered. I decree now, ah, Holy Ghost, thank you, Jesus. I see somebody with speed, oil on your heads, increase on your hands. I see speed on your feet. You're running with speed. You're overtaking. You're breaking barriers. You are removing barriers. You're removing hindrances. And you're coming with speed to what God has prepared, reserved, and 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 are prepared for you, says God. Speed has come upon your life. No limitations, no hindrances, testimonies and rejoicing all around. In Jesus' matchless name, amen, amen, and amen. Hey, guys, tomorrow we start 1 John 1 and 2. You can't read 1 John chapter 1 alone. I will explain when I, when I start reading tomorrow. You can read 1 John chapter 1 alone. If you're studying the Bible, you must read 1 John chapter 1 and 1 John chapter 2. So tomorrow we're going to do 1 John chapter 1 and 1 John chapter 2. That's what we're doing tomorrow. 1 John chapter 1 and 1 John chapter 2. Tomorrow we'll start a new book. We're done with Peter. 1 Peter and 2 Peter. Sunday morning I'm starting a new series. Salvation series. Salvation series. It will bless you. i like for you to be there. God has a word that will change your life completely. I love you, man. Have a flourishing day ahead of you. See you tomorrow morning, Friday. We're praying tomorrow morning, Friday. I love you. Blessings, blessings, blessings.